Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this glorious day. Say hi, little G. It's in the brook having a little drink. We can't, well, you can, as human uh, creatures, but you're risking getting beaver fever, which isn't probably isn't that fun. You know, a lot of time in the bathroom kind of thing, Ugh. but it doesn't affect dogs. All right, so uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and it is my pleasure and honor to have this discussion with you today so i was actually out on the deck this morning enjoying my hot tea and and just the yard and giovanni was right next to me it was great and i thought of just i just was inspired to do like a third part to this little mini series which i did also didn't you know plan on i don't do a lot of planning it just kind of it's like an inspiration or in spirit kind of situation also if i move the camera around a little bit it's because there are deer flies they could literally pick me up and carry me off the, you know, carry me off the ground. All good because we're in the woods, but um, I might have to move around a little bit. Okay, so uh, anyway, so I came up with, okay, so we started out with the know or figure out your kryptonite, right? Which means your Achilles means your biggest fear. And then we had um, talk back to it. And all that is super important because we know that the unconscious mind, the vault, which we cannot access, right? Hence unconscious is responsible for about 95% of everything we say and do each and every day of our lives. So think about that. So the only way to sort of manage your kryptonite is to, is to really pay attention to how you're feeling and talk back to it until um, we, we swap that out with, you know, the, the, we talk about the thoughts, right? Thoughts, then beliefs, right? That makes it happen. So when those little thoughts grow up, they become beliefs. So when we talk back to our kryptonite, we incorporate these positive, you know, warrior thoughts into our belief system. And that's when things really get easier. Okay. So then the last, the third part, I was going to, going to call it, um, um, conquering your kryptonite. And then on the way here in the Jeep, I just, and then partially on the first part of this trail, it's all like a process. I decided to change the word because conquer implies defeat and like we're making it go away. And we can, I'll, we're going to do another perspective on that in a second. But so that's why I steered away from it to coexist with your kryptonite because in reality, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Um, and conquer also, if I could put the camera down, which I can't because I mean, I could, but it'd be kind of muddy. Um, I would use both fists and like pound them together because conquer implies, you know, battle. And that's not really the, the, message I want to convey because as Carl Jung said so brilliantly years ago that which we resist will persist so we don't want to get into a battle situation we also don't want to insinuate comp that there's a competition or like a a victory component to it because um, it's way more authentic than that all right so the biggest thing we talked about it before and for various reasons awareness is the first thing we can't do what we don't know and then once we become aware we come re we become responsible to take charge of our own well-being and our, our own uh, well um, in a minecraft sense minecraft is the psychology of optimal human functioning and life satisfaction right so take to take the reins to take the helm to be in the driver's seat for your own mind crafting, okay? That's what we're talking about. So knowing what your kryptonite is, when we talked about it being a deeper dive, remember I thought mine was abandonment, and that's largely true, except it was, it was like a deeper level, because it has a cousin, which is a little deeper for me, which was the rejection piece with the group, and I told you about that with work. So we have uh, the awareness thing, right? And then here's the next step, okay? Acceptance. Acceptance is the key to most problems. We're not talking about waving the white flag and like, oh, I give up. No, it's not that kind of acceptance. It's accepting that 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 this kryptonite is there, which is attached to the ego, obviously. The ego is really kind of the, the, the evil demon that gets in the way of things, but it also helps us grow. So this is why we want to learn to coexist with it. It isn't going away. So there's no point in thinking it's going away. And okay, so we have accept, we have awareness, acceptance that I have my kryptonite. I have, ha I have had to accept, I think I use the word catapult. I'm just itching because that deer fly got me a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I, in my, and I think it was the last video I used the word catapult with that, with a colleague of mine is actually a friend and was, must've been in a, in some sort of wonky place in his life because it was very out of character. It was over a couple of months and said things that were 
with the with kind of a mean intention, right? And you think, oh, why do you have him as a friend? Because he really, I, I've known him for a really long time, and he's a good person, and we all are a mixed bag. And so um, that was a situation of high roading it and um, being quietly effective. And now, I mean, he's totally, I haven't seen him in a while, but he's back. He's totally back. And I still don't really know what insecure place he was coming out of, but um, well worth it to, the whole thing was, again, was well worth it because, and I'm very grateful for, even though it was hard and painful and, and stuff, it ca literally catapulted me to get an A on that last quiz that the universe presented me because I was 98% there with that whole thing. I, I don't want to repeat for everybody who did watch the last two, but catapulted. Okay, so we have awareness, can't do what you don't know. Then we have acceptance. Acceptance is the key to most problems. Once we get it, that ouch, that the kryptonite is there, it takes it takes the um, the wind out of the sails, or it takes the it just takes the energy out of it when we don't choose to battle it and go up against it. Think of it like you're throwing a spear at it, only it's into space, okay? Or javelin if you're a track person, right? Think of it as throwing a javelin into space. A javelin is never gone. It might might even end up in a different galaxy, but it's not really ever gone. But the farther and farther you get away from it, or it gets away from you. Um, it loses its power. It big time loses its power until there's not much of anything left. There's just like this sort of skeletal reminder and you still know it's there. So it's kind of like you're still paying attention. Okay, and then next is meaning. Next is, is meaning because this is very, very important to remember for life in general. The only meaning anything has is the meaning that we attach to it, the meaning that we give it. So I was going through that, um, using the ex example, as my mother's, you know, the famous manic ride to the Bronx to say all that stuff about I should have been an abortion, blah, 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 blah. Well, of course, when I was 17, 16 or 17, I don't know. Obviously, in that moment, with the music was blasting and it was all that stuff, I was, of course, scared and I attached all kinds of fear to it and I attached all kinds of hurt to it because it I mean it was it was hurtful until like I made that up but the meaning it had a lot of meaning of of rejection the I don't want you like and if your own if your own you know mother doesn't want you who's going to kind of thing and I attached all this stuff to it then and then obviously it takes somebody years to work through that because that's pretty heavy duty and I, and then obviously then and if so let's say I was 17 it's 40 years later right um I am so I don't it doesn't have any meaning it really truly doesn't and um, as far as, you know, both parents, I don't blame them. And I, I, I don't, I mean, I did for a while, but I don't anymore. I, I forgive them, I forgive me, and I release them with love and kindness. And here's the other thing is that as far as the, 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 the mental torture that kryptonite can do, for me, it was that feeling of rejection and we don't want you, right? We don't love you. We don't accept you. We don't care about you and we're not going to protect you. All that stuff is, is, is when we, we cease to allow the, that meaning to be attached to a behavior or an event or whatever. Wow, does it get lighter fast? We realize that, that the power is here. And when we give, when we give meaning to, to whatever it is in your life, swap that out for what I just shared. It just, it, it's like a snowball rolling down downhill and so it's very important once we do the awareness thing we do the acceptance thing that the kryptonite ain't going away do the javelin just picture yourself throwing the kryptonite they look like icicles right like superman you know just like just throw it into space knowing it's out there someplace but it's not near you okay it's not near you and it, just picture it do, do a meditation with it with some acoustical music this is what i do with things and, and just picture it getting farther and farther away and um, not having any more power over you. And also, like like we said um, with Glinda, the good witch of the north, right? She says, you have no power here. Picture yourself throwing that, that kryptonite icicle into, in, into space and telling, telling yourself, you have no more power here. Go to another galaxy, be gone, okay? So then the meaning thing, work on that. And then that goes into our, my last thing, which Wayne Dyer talks about a lot, one of my greatest teachers of which I have many, which include that, that colleague of mine, um, is when we change the way we think about things, what we think about changes, okay? And those are some powerful words of wisdom by Wayne Dyer. And so with whatever it is that happened to you, that's your, that's your kryptonite, or, and it's not just going to be one thing. If your kryptonite 
is whatever. It's going to like be a trail for your life, obviously. For me, it was the rejection thing with social groups, right? You know, it didn't happen that much. I just feared it happening. I didn't, I haven't had it, had it happen actually very much at all, except with my own nuclear family, ironically. Um, but the fear of it is what's excruciating, right? So changing the way you look at it is going to change the way you feel. Because remember, thoughts first, feelings second, action and behavior third. So when, once we realize that the only power, whatever set event from, you know, 1995 or 2007 or whatever, the only power it has is the power we give it. We realize that we are like, um, we talked about that thoroughbred horse. We're the one, it can be a little 80 pound, 85 pound jockey on a horse controlling that huge, huge, beautiful animal that weighs whatever pounds going at whatever velocity. And a little tiny jockey can, tr can control that with just a little, you know, movement of the reins. Think of that. Picture yourself on the thoroughbred. Picture the horse as whatever your kryptonite is, or the horse is carrying the kryptonite on her back or something like that. And then you just take the reins and shift it and then toss that stuff. Sorry, I got to itch my deer fly. There we go. Um, and then toss that stuff into space. Okay. That's it. Um, awareness, acceptance, meaning, change the way you look at things. The things you look at will change. That is it. So, so that is how we conquer the kryptonite by coexisting with the kryptonite. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful uh, woods, a little dominated by deer flies, but have a mindful day.